So far, we have seen different kinds of machine learning models. We have seen decision trees, for example. We have also seen analogy-based models, such as k-nearest neighbors and support vector machines with RBF kernels. There is another fundamental and widely used class of models called linear models. These models are called linear because they make a prediction using a linear function of the input features. What does that mean? We will look at that in a bit. In this particular lecture, we are going to talk about three linear models. We are going to talk about linear regression for regression problems, logistic regression for classification problems, and we will very briefly talk about linear support vector machines. Let's start with linear regression. Linear regression is a very, very popular linear model for regression problems. It has a long history and many of you might have heard about linear regression. In this particular video, we are going to focus on how PREDICT works for linear regression. And we are not really going to talk about how FIT works. To demonstrate how PREDICT works for linear regression, we are going to consider this hypothetical regression dataset where the problem is predicting weight of a snake given its length. So this is our toy data set. We only have one feature, length feature, and the target here is weight. Let's visualize our hypothetical data. On the x-axis, we have our feature, length feature, and on the y-axis, we have our target, which is weight. And these are our data points. Now let's train a linear regression model using scikit-learn and let's plot linear regression model. That's what I'm doing here. And this is our linear regression model. This orange line is our model. Now given a new example, that is given a new length, how do we predict the corresponding target? Suppose we are given this new length 1.5. We predict the target by looking at the corresponding point on the orange line, and that's going to be our target. So in this case, it will be a little bit bigger than 10. So for this new snake with length 1.5, we are predicting that its weight is going to be a little bit bigger than 10. So here I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying a snake length equal to 0 0.75, some different length. And this is the prediction given by our model. If you look at 0.75 length, then what we do is we just look at the corresponding point on the orange line. And in this particular case, the weight or prediction is going to be a little bit bigger than 6. And that's what we get here. The prediction here is 6.20. So in this particular case, our linear model is this line. And we can make predictions using this line. Now, what do we need to represent a line? From your high school mathematics, you might remember that a line can be represented using slope and y-intercept. So these are the two things that our model is actually learning in this particular case. And we can access these two things using this coef underscore. That's going to be the slope, which is also called a coefficient or a weight. And R is our uh, linear regression model object. So this is the slope. That's what the model has learned. And this is our y-intercept. And we can access it using this intercept underscore attribute of our linear regression object. So these are the two things learned by our model. And using these two things, we can draw this line. And using this line, we can make predictions. Okay, so now we know what exactly we are learning. Let's talk about predictions again. How are we making predictions? In our case, we just have one feature and our model is a line. So we have learned a coefficient, r dot coef underscore, that is our slope, and we have learned this intercept, 
which is our y-intercept of the line. So these are the two things learned by our model. Now in this equation, I'm using different notation. I'm calling this coefficient w1 and I'm calling this intercept b. Okay, so this intercept is also called a bias and that's why we are using this symbol b here and the coefficient are also called weights and that's why I'm using this w1 here. So we have learned these two things. Our model has learned two things because we have only one feature. W1 is this coefficient associated with our feature and B is the intercept. And given a new feature value now, if that is X1, then how are we going to make prediction? We are going to take this weighted sum, we are going to add the intercept and that's going to be our prediction. Okay, so given some new value for length, snake length is our new value, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that with r dot coef, which is our coefficient associated with that feature, and I'm going to add r in dot intercept. So I'm going to add the intercept of that the model has learned, and that's going to be our prediction. And if you look at r dot predict, with this particular example, we are going to get the same prediction. And this is great, right? We exactly know how the model is making predictions. In our toy example for easy visualization, we had only one feature and our model learned a coefficient associated with that feature and the bias term. This generalizes to more features. Suppose you have D features in your data set and you train a linear regression model on your data set. The model in that case would learn the different coefficients, one associated with each feature. And it will also learn the bias term. Once we have these learned coefficients and the bias term, how do we make predictions on the new example? The prediction is going to be this weighted sum of feature values then we add the bias term to it and that's going to be our prediction. And that's what I'm saying in this equation. So in this equation, y hat is our prediction. These w's in red are our learned coefficients. This b is the bias term learned by the model and x1, x2, xt are our input feature values. And we are taking this weighted summation of these input feature values using the loan coefficients. We are adding the bias to it and that's going to be our prediction. And since our prediction is this linear combination of feature values, we call this a linear model. Let's look at a quick example. Suppose you are working on housing price prediction problem. You have some hypothetical data set and in this data set you just have four features number of bedrooms number of bathrooms square footage and age you train linear regression model on this data set and these are your hypothetical learned coefficients by your model we have a coefficient associated with each feature now given a new example given a new property which has three bedrooms two bathrooms 1875 square footage and 66 year old and we want to predict housing price for this property how do we do that with a linear model these are our learned coefficients associated with each feature so we take this weighted summation of feature values so we multiply 3 by 0 0.20 that is coefficient of bedrooms 2 times 0 0.11 then 1875 times 0 0.002 and 66 times minus 0 0.02 okay and that weighted summation plus the bias term is going to give us our prediction let's talk about linear regression models in scikit-learn you will notice that scikit-learn has this linear regression model but my recommendation is not to use it 
instead use this linear regression model called ridge this particular model is same as linear regression except that it has this complexity hyperparameter called alpha if you use this vanilla linear regression you might get very very large coefficients for features and unexpected results so overall my recommendation for this course and in general is to use ridge instead of linear regression now we are going to train ridge on the boston housing data set the task here is predicting the median value of homes in Boston neighborhoods. And we are given features such as crime rate in the neighborhood, average number of rooms, proximity to the Charles River, highway accessibility, and so on. So this is our data set. Let's load the data set. These are our several features. Now the feature names, they are not very descriptive. We don't really know the meaning of these features from these names. So this is actually scikit-learn's inbuilt data set and uh, that's why I have imported it from sklearn.datasets. And because of that, it has this Boston dot uh, description. And when we print that, we get some information about the features. So this crim feature, for example, it represents per capita crime rate by town. Then uh, this RM feature is average number of rooms per dwelling. Then there is this RAD feature which tells us index of accessibility to radial highways. Okay. Now since our features seem to be on different scales, it might be a good idea to scale our features. So I'm creating a pipeline with standard scalar as the first step and ridge as the second step. We only have numeric features, so we don't really have to worry about encoding categorical features and so on. I'm carrying out cross-validation with the pipeline, and these are our validation scores uh, and train scores. Okay, so our results seem okay. Now, we said before that Ridge is different from vanilla linear regression in that it has this complexity hyperparameter alpha. And similar to other hyperparameters we have seen so far, alpha controls the fundamental trade-off. So let's examine the effect of alpha on the fundamental trade-off. As usual, I'm sweeping through several values of alpha. I'm storing mean train scores and mean cross-validation scores in each case. And here are our results. So what do we see here? For bigger values of alpha, we are underfitting. Our train score and cross-validation score are both very low. And for smaller values of alpha, generally we are likely to overfit. In this particular case, it doesn't seem like we are overfitting, but in general, if you have a very small value of alpha, you are likely to overfit. So larger alpha likely to underfit, smaller alpha likely to overfit. Remember that a linear model learns two things. First, coefficients associated with each feature, and second, the intercept or the bias term. Let's examine these two things. First, I'm getting the coefficients. I'm fitting the model again because before when we carried out cross-validation, it doesn't actually return the model. So I'm fitting it again. I'm getting the coefficients. And these are our learned coefficients. These coefficients are learned from the data. So we have coefficients associated with each feature in our data set. We see that the coefficient associated with criminal rate is negative, whereas the coefficient associated with number of rooms or uh, accessibility to highway, they are positive. And this is our intercept. Irrespective of the feature values, this intercept would always be added when we calculate prediction. Now that we have this information about intercept and these coefficients, we see that some coefficients are positive, some are negative. So how do we actually make sense of that? How do we use this information to interpret our model? You will find more information on this in the corresponding notebook.